So it's been, honestly, a couple of weeks since I started this pump box project. And suddenly winter arrived and life happened. New Year's and Christmas happened. And then we fell under the weather. But today, even though the weather sucks, I'm hopefully going to get the pump mounted. I think I was waiting to get carriage bolts. My biggest concern was that if I, if I mount it, in there, it's gonna be really hard to get out once I glue and screw this box together. I know that there is a, a pressure switch on there that we may want to keep access to, so I don't know, we may end up having to modify this box a little bit to retain access. A friend recently told me the reason he hates plumbing, you always need one more fitting. I'm gonna try to do this mostly with PEX. I really see this as kind of a, a training opportunity for the plumbing that we're gonna do on our house. One of the problems we needed to solve first was kind of getting, I guess we just need to do some organization here. Once I get this pump bolted in there, getting it back out and accessing all this stuff, it's gonna be pretty difficult. So here's our current power cord, but we wanna get this power cord running through our timer and then our switch and then going into the pump. There you are, you little sneak. Well, now that that's mounted, <laughs> sure seems really flimsy. Wow. Well, that's the mount it came with. Hypothetically difficult situation. Would I be able to get this cover off of here? Simple answer is yes.
it's kind of clear that I've misgaged or miscalculated the amount of room that it takes to get all of this plumbing assembled. Um, in this area, I need to have this check valve to prevent backflow into the pump and then into our transportation tank. And then we also need to connect up the inlet, obviously. In mind, good plumbing removes strain on connections. And what I had in mind was to use quite a bit of fittings, things like elbows and whatnot to minimize strain. But every elbow requires space to work. And since I'm using PEX, it's not particularly pliable. So uh, bending, it's not really a great option. It probably could be warmed and bent, but that's really getting away from kind of the point of this exercise, which is to build strain-free plumbing. Of course, with the house, hopefully, minus where you get to uh, fixtures, you'll have long runs without like this really tight space here. So this probably isn't a great exercise because of how cramped it is. But then again, underneath a lavatory or behind a shower, it's probably not uncommon to end up with, you know, a fairly ridiculous amount of fittings. It really sucks when you're off by an inch and you've drilled a two inch hole. <laughs> it just really sucks. So I'm kind of realizing that I probably should have bought all of these fittings and really laid the plumbing out here before I installed these bulkheads. My concept here is solid. In fact, this is spot on for alignment. Um, but man, these fittings just take up a little bit more room than I originally expected. And here we are maybe mm, three, less than three quarters of an inch off. I might try to tighten down this um, hub and see if that gets me my half an inch. I doubt it. I doubt I'm gonna get that much, but maybe I'll get lucky. And all we'll have to do is put a ridiculously small piece of PEX in there. really funny. It's the odds of going through all that effort in the stupid check valves backwards. <laughs> well, that's looking pretty good. It's obvious to me now, after all this stuff is plumbed, that if I would have moved this bulkhead over, pump's got a lot of wiggle and shimmy in it though, from that base being really weak. Just kind of temporarily shimmed it at the bottom here, but it just wants to pop out. So hopefully I can do a little bit of work to get this to be more rigid, otherwise it's gonna fatigue all that plumbing. Once that's in its correct position, it's it's really close, maybe within a maybe a quarter of an inch or less. So I've conceded that I'm going to move this bulkhead over and I'm gonna snug it up against this outer side, and that will allow me to put a single elbow, come out with PEX, a single elbow coming in. That's why you do projects like this so you can learn. And hopefully we'll make fewer mistakes on the house. Definitely a lot more at stake on the house. This really is kind of like an evolution of our water system. During the water system, I learned a lot about bulkheads and different pipe types and how to make those connections. I learned a lot about um, compression fittings, crimp fittings, stuff like that. It looks to me like I'm gonna run out of uh, clamps for my shark bite. I had no idea that I would use that many clamps. There's gotta be $30 in just this little tiny connection right here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Now I have two outlets. I was really hoping that I could just glue 
that in there, ha, and it'd be like it never happened. Wouldn't that be magical? So this is our inlet and our outlet, and we've got our check valve going the right direction now. Project's coming along pretty good. The temperature feels like it's dropped a lot outside. In fact, the water underneath my feet is turning to ice. So I think I'm gonna go in and warm up and get some soup. Did I just see you doing jumping jacks? That was really weird. I'm testing out our new drone. Oh. I'm trying oh. to see if we just wasted our money, both on the drone and um. on the ND filters. What was the jumping jacks all about? Because right now it says the shutter is at 1 200th. Ah. And the ideal shutter would be 1 50th. Ah, So okay. your jumping jacks will look very jagged. Maybe if they're lucky, I'll put clips of this in the video. We ran some errands in town today and I picked up the clamps to get this guy finished. I'm hoping all of this ridiculous effort makes our life just a tiny little bit easier every single day. check valve appears to be working. Let's set our timer. I think this will take 30 minutes to empty. Well, I heard the timer click off. Looks like our tank is about here so maybe a little over a third this plumbing definitely did slow down our flow this tank used to end or uh, empty in about 30 minutes let's try for another 15. i have a hunch that we're past time lapse 30. oh yeah way past did you come to inspect my work Get your box did done gone. My did, did done. done is done did. Did you get it? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Yay. So it pumped for 30 minutes and then the timer turned off. Uh -oh. But guess what didn't happen? <laughs> it didn't backflow. Oh. Because it has a check valve, yo. Heck yeah. Go check valves. Plumbing, I yo. I didn't appreciate my former life. Right? Because I didn't know what they were. Definitely negatively impacted the flow rate because in 30 minutes it wasn't quite empty. Okay. You yeah. could watch it for like 30 minutes and do nothing else or it could take an hour, but you got to do other stuff. Like sit in front of the heater and eat ice cream. Oh yeah, my gosh. yeah. We should have Barrietto ice cream. We should. We have a new concoction we must try tonight. And if it's good, we just may be able to complete our successful takeover of the neighborhood through ice cream yep. using this one recipe. Yep. 